Tired of songs like Baby Shark and Work, 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 Work getting stuck in your head? Well, you're not alone. More than 90% of adults report this happens to them at least once a week. But how do songs get stuck in our heads in the first place? We're talking to music psychologists to give us more insight, and hopefully they can offer some tips on how we can make the music stop. When we listen to music, it's not only the auditory centers of the brain that are activated, there are all sorts of things that are happening there, like centers related to movement, to attention, to memory, to emotion, are all activated. Officially known as involuntary musical imagery, or stuck song syndrome, Arums occur when fragments of music get stuck in your head, long after you've heard the song. They're generally 15 to 20 seconds long, and when you catch one, it can stay in your head for 30 minutes or more. When we listen to music, it goes from our ears to our auditory cortex. It then travels to all four major lobes of the brain, evoking many reactions throughout the body. Your brain experiences positive psychological effects when reintroduced to something it already knows, like a familiar beat, melody, or chorus. So some research suggests that songs may get stuck due to repetitive lyrics, which activate the brain's reward system. Researchers at Goldsmiths University have also linked the frequency of airworms with the size and shape of our brains. So chances are, if songs get stuck in your head a lot, it means that your brain has more thickness than the areas responsible for auditory perception and voluntary musical imagery. To understand more about airworms, music psychologist Kelly Jakubowski surveyed more than 3,000 people to find out which songs most frequently got stuck in their head. Jakubowski compiled a list of 100 tunes and compared their melodic features to some of the most popular songs in modern history. The top three most frequently named airworms in the study were Bad Romance by Lady Gaga, Can't Get You Out of My Head by Kylie Minogue, and Don't Stop Believing by Journey. They tended to be upbeat songs, so fairly fast tempo songs. The melodies were generally fairly generic in terms of the pitch contour. Uh, tend to have this sort of rising and then falling contour like you would get in nursery rhyme songs or things like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We also found, despite the fact that the overall melodies were fairly generic, that earworm songs did tend to have some sort of interval structure that maybe set them apart from your sort of average generic pop song. So it was kind of this combination of a, a sort of quite generic scaffold, but then some sort of little extra bit to add interest um, that's a bit unexpected. It's fun fact time. Earworms can be triggered by hearing a few notes, as you might expect but it could also be triggered by seeing something related to the song. So if you see a man walking down the street wearing a red leather jacket, it's possible that Thriller might pop into your head. According to researchers, two out of three people say that when they get airworms, it's a positive experience they enjoy. But if you're in the minority and can't stand them, there's definitely ways to get around it. Experts say you could go on a music diet. Or, if a song is stuck in your head, you could just listen to it all the way through. Because maybe you don't know all of the lyrics, and that could be one of the reasons why it makes it return back to your mind. By listening to the tune, you provide some sort of completion and some sort of closure. You could also try singing God Save the Queen. According to Jakubowski's survey, people said it was one of the most popular methods to kill an airworm. Still got that song stuck in your head? Oddly enough, you might be able to chew the tune away and do some dark. When you mentally rehearse 
either verbal material or musical material, you need your sort of articulatory system, which includes your sort of tongue and, and mouth muscles. And, and so if you're chewing gum vigorously, as he asked them to do in the study, at least um, whatever chewing gum vigorously means, then uh, they were actually less likely to get the song appearing in their mind as an earworm. But, I mean, I think this could kind of backfire if you're not chewing vigorously enough. So if you're chewing to the beat of the music, it might actually, you know, kind of <laughs> go the opposite direction. So if a song gets stuck in your head, now you know it's probably because of the thickness of your brain, repetitive lyrics, or the composition of the melody. But if none of these solutions work for you, then I hope the tune you catch is a fun one. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's episode of What The Facts. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Got a weird body science question? Shoot your shot, drop a comment below, and who knows, we might cover it. Be sure to catch more of this season every Tuesday.